YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I recently watched the movie Nope, and honestly, that movie made me love film photography even more. There's a lot of different reasons why, so you definitely want to stick through this entire video. Nope, there's a lot of spoilers in this video as well. I'm going to try to keep it to a minimum, not to give away unnecessary stuff, but there's some key points here related to film and analog photography that are tied to key elements of the plot. So if you don't want to ruin the movie, don't watch any further. So this movie is about a lot of different things and it's about the spectacle of recording everything. You know, in this modern world, we're obsessed with recording every single thing that we see, but that makes you wonder what is actually real. So, you know, moving away from that general topic, we zoom into this world of film and analog photography. And right from the get, this is a very important theme in this entire movie. First and foremost, this movie is about two characters who are theoretically related to the first person that was recorded on film. And that was a video of a jockey. And this is a famous video, you can look it up on Wikipedia or anything, but basically it's a looping video of a jockey that shows what happens when you have multiple consistent frames turning into a motion picture. It's individual, it's still images, but when you put them together in succession, you get video. So that's a very key part of the history of analog photography and of just, you know, photography in general, cinematography, if you want to say that. Um, but the point is that is kind of a key idea that sets forward this entire plot of the movie. And like I said, the characters are obsessed with the idea of being related to this historic jockey who was a Bahamian man who was the first person to ever be recorded. So it's a pretty cool fact. Um, and there's some really good history there, but that kind of sets the tone for the entire movie. You see that the film photography was very important there and it just goes on further from there. So one of the central ideas of this movie is that electronics aren't gonna work in trying to capture this phenomenon of the alien that's being seen in the movie. And if you've watched the trailer, you know that this is an alien movie, so that's not giving anything away. I won't tell you anything more about the alien except for the fact that electronics don't work and therefore if you use a digital camera, you will not be able to take photos, videos, or kind of anything that requires a digital signal to create an image. And that's very important because the characters want to capture this alien, but they can't. At least they can't with the conventional modern methods. So what do they do? They actually hire a cinematographer who in the movie is supposed to be this really famous cinematographer who's kind of gone off the deep end a little bit. But this famous cinematographer refuses to use digital cameras and will only shoot it on film. And that right there is a really interesting concept because it kind of forces the viewers to think about the idea that digital photography or, or video, you know, as this kind of mainstay modern thing, perhaps isn't as useful as we think it is. And all this modern technology maybe takes us away from, you know, the, the original concepts that are involved in creating an image. So this cinematographer actually uses an IMAX camera. And it's a very interesting fact because first and foremost, the movie was shot using an IMAX camera. I think the majority of it was shot on IMAX, if not all of it. Uh, you can look that up and find out. But so the movie itself was shot in IMAX, which is amazing. And it, you know, it yields this really incredible, uh, dramatic image that if you watch it in an IMAX theater, it's going to be massive. So I highly recommend you do that because that's what I did. And it was stunning. Um, but when we talk about the actual plot line that involves the IMAX camera, that's very intriguing because the cinematographer really wants the glorious moment of capturing this alien and he uses that IMAX, that IMAX camera that basically requires a hand crank and he has to load the film. And there's a bit of a plot line that's built around that. I won't spoil that too much, but ultimately it's just really cool to see IMAX cameras be given so much love, given that I would say the majority of people don't even know what that really is. And the fact that it relies on film is obviously a central fact. Um, and I think most people probably don't even know that either. People assume IMAX is probably some modern thing, which of course it is, and it's been adapted in very modern ways but it still relies on that giant 65 millimeter film that we all love. I actually made a video about 65 millimeter film not too long ago. Check it out in this uh, link above, but that's about how you process and scan that film and how you get these giant negatives and even bigger video files. So anyways, back to the movie. Uh, the IMAX camera that was used in there becomes kind of a character of its own in the movie. And it's just really cool to see the love and appreciation that's given to that IMAX camera and format. So this is definitely gonna be a bit of a spoiler here, but at the end of the movie, there's a really important thing that happens. And that is that one of our central characters is actually able to photograph the alien. Again, I won't tell you what the alien is, but the way that she photographs this alien is actually with this giant instant camera. So the instant camera is actually a prop. That's part of this amusement park that is a key kind of place in the movie. Again, watch the movie and you'll find out. But in this amusement park, one of the attractions is that people can put a coin into this well, you know, kind of like a water well, and look down into it. And then after, you know, a three, two, one count, a big flash goes off and then it lights the people looking down into the well and it gives you a nice balanced exposure. And that actually that actually is happening on instant film. 
So that the end thing that you get from this, you know, giant well camera is a very big print. I would say about the size of a sheet of paper. So you see this pop up during the movie and it just kind of looks like this thing that is kind of curious, but not that interesting. It ends up being a very important thing at the end of the movie because the character uses this to actually photograph the alien. And it's very interesting what this actually means thematically because again, we go back to the idea that digital cameras perhaps aren't as amazing as they are and they still kind of leave room for things not working, which obviously is a problem, but also, you know, allows some room for you to question what you're seeing given how normal they are. In this particular image that she gets, this is a one-off instant print and she gets a couple of them, but one of them really nails it. So the fact that you have an instant print, which itself has a negative and then of course the positive, um, there is no way to kind of Photoshop that, at least not in real life. You'd have to scan it first and then you could manipulate it. But the negative that she gets and then the resulting positive image, that's a one of one. And to manipulate that, you'd have to physically draw on it and it would be extremely obvious that it was manipulated. So that makes you wonder what is the value of this kind of old school way of doing photography where you have physical things that come out as opposed to just digital files. Digital files can be hard to kind of prove their truth and their existence. Whereas with a you know, physical format, um, you own it, you see it, you can feel it. And any manipulation of it is gonna be extremely obvious, at least compared to digital. So I love how this kind of becomes a thing in the movie. Um, you know, you wonder when you're watching this movie, are people gonna believe her and her brother that there was this alien and all this stuff went down? And you know, the answer I guess theoretically is yes. That's not something that's actually looked at in the movie, it's kind of left open to interpretation. But from my point of view, especially as an analog lover, the answer is yes because that print that she got, that is a physical print that came out from a physical process of the light bouncing off of that alien and hitting the film and then creating an image uh, via the positive process. That's indisputable. That light literally bounced off of that alien. So from that point of view, it's as real as it gets. And then when she, you know, when it comes time for her to show that to people and say, hey, you know, we saw an alien, here's what it looked like. It's gonna be very hard for people to say that it was a lie. And in this world, you know, you see it in the movie, they talk about aliens a lot and how the FBI and the army and you know the government has all this footage about aliens and stuff like that. And people kind of, you know, it, it almost becomes very normal. Nobody seems to believe it, even though theoretically there's a real video of it. Um, well, that's a digital thing. Now that we have this physical film format of it, um, is it gonna be you know disputable? Are people gonna be able to say that's not real? I don't know. I just love how much appreciation and how much value is given to this analog format of photography and cinematography. Um, immediately that stuck out to me and you know I thought it was gonna be kind of one random thing in the movie the fact that it was about this old-school film jockeys like legacy and it was you know shot on IMAX and there was an IMAX camera in the movie but time and time again in the movie this was reinforced and the most important thing that happens in the entire movie happens involving the analog process let alone instant positive film which I think is really cool because that's one of the more niche things in film photography nowadays um, but in this movie it plays the absolute central role and of course it's even a big format of that it's not you know small instax like a lot of us probably have dealt with this is massive this is one big sheet of instant film which still exists nowadays but it's probably pretty hard to come by um, so yeah I just love how much of a central role analog photography plays in this movie and it's really cool to see you know filmmakers and, and this kind of the cinema world give so much love to the analog format. So if you enjoyed the video, of course, go watch the movie Nope. Um, it's very, very fun. It's nothing like the other movies that have been made by Jordan Peele. This one's, you know, much more wacky, but much more of a big Hollywood production with lots of effects and, you know, a lot of money spent on the set. So go check that out. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. I don't do this type of video usually, but this was a lot of fun and I felt that my audience, which loves film photography, would probably like to hear about this. All right, y'all, so the next video, I'm out.